the Austrian school is a great inspiration. And in a way, the Austrian school was what we all were once in economics. I'm, I'm an economist by, um, by training, although as my great hero, Mae West, the American comedian expressed it, I was snow white, but I drifted. <laughs> so I've wandered a lot, but w as soon as I understood economics, I became in essence an Austrian economist. Even before I knew much about Austrian e economics, I, I, I understood that markets work without centralized erection, and they work through the spontaneous cooperation of millions. Um, Austrian economics became distinctive when the rest of economics moved away from these 18th and 19th century insights. I'm not going to need that, Darren. It's very dangerous up there. Why don't you take it away? Uh, the, and and in, this, in this dark age of economics that began in the 19... Uh, um, 30s and extended into the 80s, these few courageous figures in Austrian economics kept the flame of spontaneous order uh, um, burning. Uh, I, I think it took tremendous courage, coraggio, mut, you know, great great, great courage to stand against what even another Austrian na national, not Hayek or, or Mises, but Joseph Schumpeter, along with most other economists and intellectuals in the 1930s and 40s and 50s believed, which was that socialism was inevitable, that socialism was our future. Schumpeter was not ecstatic about this, but he believed it was going to um, happen. But these Austrians held out. Now, the, their time has finally come, I think. It's true that we, are, we need to keep trying to persuade our socialist friends that they're completely mistaken. We have to keep at that, that, that uh, job. But it's become much easier to make Austrian-type arguments than it was when I first got into um, economics. As Manfred pointed out, I was a Marxist, I was a, I was a Keynesian, I was a social engineer. And one of the central messages of Austrian economics is that you can't predict the future. You can't lay down the future as you can in some physical, um, um, physical systems, like constructing a bridge. But you can't do that in the human uh, um, sciences for deep reasons that have to do indeed with economics. I once wrote a book called if you're so smart, I call it the American question. If you're so smart, why aren't you rich? And it's, it's a question that you can ask of anyone who says, I can predict fashion, I can predict art, I can predict the future of mathematics, or I can predict the future of the economy. And that insight means that Austrian economics is useful, really importantly for history. 
for looking back and gaining wisdom, not for extrapolating from the past, but from understanding the past. The German word holds it all, verstehen. Verstehen is what we can learn from an Austrian approach to economic history, which has become slowly my own approach. So what we can use Austrian economics for, to coin a phrase, is to grasp a constitution of liberty, to see in outline, not in detail, never in detail, if you were so smart you'd be rich, but in outline what a free society has done and can do. I would note that the great social discoveries claimed in the 19th century, social discoveries like Comtean positivism or Benthamite utilitarianism or geographic materialism or eugenics or nationalism or socialism and if you like those last two national socialism those discoveries by the intellectuals of, uh, of Europe in the 19th century proved all to be wrong proved all to be gravely mistaken we're not defined by our national history that's the basic myth of, of um, nationalism. We're not properly in control of our economy. We don't know what the future will bring. We can't lay it down. That's the basic mistake of socialism. But there was another discovery, an 18th century discovery made firmer and clearer in some minds in the 19th century. Carl, Carl, Carl Menger, for example, that was correct. And this is it. I'm here to announce it this evening, to tell you what the secret discovery was. The discovery was that a free and dignified people, if left alone, are fantastically creative. This we know from Verstehen. This we know from our history. We know that ordinary people, not the elite, not the experts, our, our great president Harry Truman said, an expert is someone who doesn't want to learn anything new because then he wouldn't be an expert. <laughs> A deep truth. Not the experts, not the, prof the, the professors and the intellectuals, not what I call the clerisy. They're not the source of our advance. The source of our advance is ordinary folks. And that discovery, that liberal discovery that uh, Adam Smith uh, saw in the 18th century is what we honor in the Austrian School of Economics. So I'm thrilled to be so honored by such an honorable school. Thank you very much. Well, what Deidre now gets by His Serene Highness is the rising star. Of course, your star has not only risen, it's still very high up there in the sky, and we want it for a very long time there. Deidre, 
the certificate has been signed by Vernon Smith, the Nobel laureate, um, our, honorary, uh, our honorary director and president of the Hayek Institute as well. He sends his warmest regards. He regrets not to be with us here, but he is very proud to be part of the team of those people who um, selected <laughs> you. And we actually, the entire board and everybody here from the Austrian Economic Center, the Hayek Institute, is proud to have you as one of our heroes and as the freedom fighter. And we, I, we just cannot express our thanks enough for, for, for you, for, be, for doing what you do, and for helping us all understand the understanding. Thank you so much for sharing. I think, Your Serene Highness, you should add something as well. You know, being a real Austrian fighter. <clears throat> I'm coming from Liechtenstein, but my roots are Austrian from the family, and my thinking is very much Austrian too. So I very much liked what you said. I read some of the things you said, and myself, I'm a historian and therefore an economist. And that's why I understood you so well, and I great admiration for you. And it was a pleasure, really, honor to see you. sit down. <laughs> I just had Arthur. I just had my hip joints replaced and I know that standing is difficult. <laughs>